this on. Then we'll go up to the toilet and then we'll have some breakfast, can't we? Oh, okay. Sure, Armin. That's the way. Where's my daddy? He's a long, long way away. He's at work and he'll be back soon. Are you going to help me find my slippers? Hmm? Come on, let's have a look. Where can they be? Where can they be? I can see your slippers. You can get them on. Calling Neverly and John Peters. Are you there, John? Well, a very special message for you. A happy birthday from your loving wife, Pam, and from your kids, Josie. Hiya. Hey. Another early bird. Me? Oh, we don't usually see you at this time. Oh, I want to get in the salon handy today. It's going to be chocolate. Might be able to do some more cutting if I ask one of the stylists. Still enjoying the job? Yeah. Well, this is away. Oh, while the cat's away. Mm. Well, it's got a good reputation, that salon. Should learn a lot there. Is he a good teacher? Right. Is the bathroom free? Yeah, if my dad's not in there, but I haven't seen him. Right. Come on, let's go and get washed. <laughs> Oh, oh, God! Want to switch that off, Linda? What's that? Well, uh, we don't advertise the fact, do we? Oh, you're ashamed of me now, are you? Of course I'm not. We'll give us a kiss then. Right. Do you want a lift in? No, it's all right. So let go on my own car. Oh, great! You can follow me to that new car then. Honestly, Billy, wait till you see the breakfast. Seventy people a lot, toast and coffee. That'll uh, that'll build up your strength. Eh? <laughs> it will, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a minute. No, no, it's all right, sir. Don't come in. Why not? Uh, it won't be a minute. Just hang on there, eh? Hurry up, love. Oh, will ya? Well, come on, hiya. The place will be full of live drivers if we don't... Hey, Tracy, do some toast. Lost. Just keep asking me. Bathroom's free. 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 Well, uh, we went on to this club and then after that we went back to this mate's and uh, had a drink and a game of cards and that. Until this time? Yeah, well, uh, better get changed. <laughs> Excuse me. Tell your dad I'll wait in the car. Who does he think he's kidding? Excuse 
You're up early. Are you sleepwalking? I couldn't sleep. Worrying about what they're going to say at the clinic this morning. Well, I'm sure everything will be fine. I wish I was. It's still extremely rare. I know, but... There isn't anything you haven't told us about. What's that meant to mean? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I, I know you've been careful. Do you feel all right? Fine. It's just this damn cold. I've never had one for so long. Look, do you want me to come with you? Thanks, Dad. I'll go on my own. Well, your mother's in court this morning if you want her to drop you in town. It's all right. I'll make my own way. You will ring? Yeah. I'll ring. Good luck, son. Yes. Jimmy, I don't want any. No. Well, if he'd stop talking a minute, I'd get him. Hold on, I think he's coming. Billy, Jimmy's on the phone. Um, tell him I'll uh, ring him tonight, yeah? I'm sorry he couldn't stop. He'll ring you tonight. Charming. Could you give me a lift? We can still catch him. It's obvious he doesn't want to talk to us this morning. What's he seeing here, eh? Oh, what do you think? And he's embarrassed because we caught them. I'll go and get Claire dressed. Why does he have to pick here, eh? Hey? The first woman he looks at since my mum and he starts that. Well, he might not be. Oh, were you stupid? They wouldn't stay out all night, would they, if there was nothing going on? Well, keep it down, will you? Yeah, well, it's true. Well, she thought that between him and Cathy. But there was nothing going on between them. Yeah, well, like Cathy. Then it's just all of his bitch. Shh! Yeah, it's kind of like a blooming refugee camp, this place. If he gets stuck on that Linda, she'll be moving in next. Yeah, well, if she moves in, I'm moving out, OK? Try. See ya. I've uh, put yours to one side. It's here. Oh, Billy. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, honest. Yeah, well, I did say I didn't want to advertise the fact. Well, we are over 21. Yeah, and I told you the kids are still upset about the man. I don't want to look like, you know... Uh... Oh, like you're enjoying yourself. Even. Something like that, yeah. I don't want to upset them. I want us to be, you know... Uh... Well, discreet. I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> hey, that's not being discreet now, is it? <laughs> okay, I'll see you tonight, then. Eh? All right. And uh, Billy, I'll uh, I'll do you something really special to make up for that breakfast we missed, eh? Great. There's this album there. Hiya, Hello. stranger. How are you? Should have been me asking you, that. Hello, Claire. How are you doing? Well, what's it like camping up here, then? Oh, if it's that bad, I can give you a chance to get out. Keep fit, class at the uh, Institute. Do you fancy it? Only 50p. What about madam? Well, she can come and all, can't you, Claire? Watch me and your mum shaking it all about. Fancy a cup of tea first? Yeah, all right, come on. Tell us how you're getting on. Nine was your four. Hi, John. Hi. You're coming home tomorrow? Oh, that's great. Uh-huh. Who? Who are you bringing? I just feel as if Rod and Tracy must really resent me being here. Billy's all right, does his best to make us feel welcome. Oh, he's a smashing bloke. He was really good to me. It's just the kids. They're either sloping off upstairs, making me feel like I should be sitting in the extension. So it takes some getting used to not having your own place. They're even worse, you know, since he brought his girlfriend home. They hate her. Oh, don't talk to me about her. 
She, when I think of the time I wasted when I was here, and the kids didn't even hate me. You're not still serious about this, are you? Too right I am. When I think of me, soft peddling, biding me time, playing it easy, thinking it might be too soon after Dory. Oh. How many times has he seen this, Linda? Quite a lot, really. Has he? Well, I'm not having that cow running after him. We'll see about that. Gordon? Where the hell have you been? You said you'd phone. Your mother's already rung me twice. Well? For heaven's sake. I'm clear. Oh. oh. <sighs> All those hours waiting, I... I really convinced myself. Why didn't you phone? I went to see Brian Lawrence. What? What'd you go and see him for? Didn't you realise I'd be worried, both of us? He asked me to call in today, about the salesman's job. Are you prepared to work for him? Why not? Well, don't you think... <sighs> well, couldn't you do better than that? Job's a job, Dad. I mean, what other luck have I had to date? And he is a friend of Mum's, so I'm sure the interview will be a formality. So you don't need to try, you mean? No, I don't mean that. It's good of Mum to put the word in for me. Yeah, hardly proper. Touting to a fellow JP to get her own son a job. You don't like him, do you? Oh, it's not a case of that. No, you don't like him because he's a, an ordinary, working-class bloke that's made good, not the sort of guy Mum should be friendly with. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He's a very successful businessman. Just comes from the wrong part of town, eh? All right, Gordon. As you say, a job's a job. Yes, it is. And it's what I need. These last few days, you know, hoping and hoping the test would be negative. Well, I promised myself that if I was clear, then it'd be a completely fresh start. Forget... Forget Chris. Forget most of the friends we had. A whole new start. OK, so it might be flogging second-hand cars, but it is at least a positive step in a different direction. Well, I'm not sorry to hear that, at any rate. When you have your interview? I've got to go back this afternoon. I'll have to press my suit. It's definitely a collar and tie job. Well, before you do that, will you give your mother a ring? She'll be waiting for a call. OK. And, uh, I, I don't know whether it's the right thing to say about these tests, but congratulations. Oh, I left it too late. I've got to be as stiff as a ball in the morning. Me too. At least I think I've lost a few ounces. Are you back on your diet? Mm, too right. The minute I heard about her... Hey, oh, this Linda. What sort of build is she? Oh, not again. Come on. Oh, normal, I suppose. Oh, come on, what do you mean, normal? Wait, is she thinner than me? I've hardly seen a calf. Get some toys out. Oh, come on, she don't want me about. Wait, is she thinner, what? It's not quite nice of her, yeah. What about clothes? She dresses really well. It's not funny. <laughs> 
not really serious about this, are you? Oh, I've missed me chance. I can't let him waltz off with the first thing in a skirt he claps eyes on. Look, I know you're disappointed, love, but how are you going to stop him? I'll ask him out. What if he says no? He won't. I'll ask him and Linda and Jimmy. Or he'll think I'm asking Jimmy out. Can you say that again? Just you wait and see. Sue! Oh, what are you doing? It's my ring. I've lost it. Terry will go mad. You think it's in there? Well, it's the only place it can be after last night's tea. Well, I only missed it this morning. I've had to take the afternoon off work to try and look for it. <laughs> it's not funny. What am I going to say to Terry? I don't think I'd say anything. Uh, God for that! <laughs> Where was it? It was on the bathroom window ledge. I should have phoned you at work, I guess. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Hey, I'm sorry I was so horrible to you, but you know, after getting Terry to change it and then losing it. <laughs> now you know it's safe. Yeah. You have the afternoon off work? Yeah. So have I. How do you feel about helping get this place fixed up for John? Well, he's coming back today. He's due tomorrow. Can you help? Well, yeah. Well, we'll get this lot put back to the start. Hey. And uh, are you and Terry free for dinner tomorrow? I don't see why not. Uh, you speak German? <laughs> Me? No, oh, good God. <laughs> He's bringing some Hamburg guy home. For he wants a dinner party for him here. Well, doesn't he speak any English? I don't know. I didn't have a chance to ask John. But uh, you can make it, yeah? Yeah. Why not? Have you done with Strava? Not since I was in France, no. Did you ever do from one of these? No. Well, we're short that house. Selling cars isn't easy. If you're not enthusiastic about the product, well, you're not going to get a punt in the power of his iron in cash. Which brings me nicely onto credit. I don't see many of our clients paying with either dirty fives or even checks. Which is why I went up with these people, finance brokers. HP? Well, don't knock it. Most cars these days are bought on a never never. I'll take you for a drink with their local man. I mean, you'll have to get to know him if you go and unload this last Right. And then I think they'll sit you down for a couple of hours with Danny. He's the chief salesman here. He's been flogging cars since you were in your pants. Right, read those and bone up on that. Get to know the prices back. Right, how would you like to take me for the test run now? Yeah, great. OK. If you can make a go of it in six weeks, Gordon, you've got a job. Agreed? Agreed. If not... Jimmy? Jimmy, he's not here. Right, now, do you want to speak to Rod? Oh. I know him. I don't even want to hear about it. Yes, I'll tell him. I'll tell him it's urgent, yeah. All right, yeah. All right, Jimmy. Bye. Is he selling something? He just... Uh, he just wants a word with your dad. Oh. Hope he's not bringing any knock-off round here. Well, I'll be Kirsty, that. Hey, bring her in. I haven't seen her for ages. Yeah, well, we're going upstairs, like. See what I mean? Is there something on his mind? How would I know? Just go upstairs, like. Okay, then. All right, see you later, then. I'll see you later. All right, Kat, how's it going? You okay? Yes, Grace. Grace. You're not doing so bad yourself, I heard. Yeah, yeah. Bit luckier in your love life than me. Uh, not bad. See anything about Jimmy, have you? No. Thought you two would have passed it up by now, anyway. Nah. The thing is, Billy, it's... it's getting in touch again. You know, um, see, it'd be better if we had something definite to do together. So I was wondering if you and your new girl would like to come out with me and Jimmy, like a foursome, you know. Would that make it easier, like? Oh, yeah. But uh, when? About next Monday night. We could go for a meal. You know that new Indian? About seven o'clock. Yeah, all right, I'm game, yeah. I'll ring Jimmy and you sort it out with Linda. OK? Fair enough. Your Jimmy's been on the phone again. Look, uh, do you want me to ring him? No, no. I'll say you asked me to ask him. It'll be better for me, yeah? I don't mind. Saves me having to phone about knock-off tellies or whatever he's selling. Anyway, i better get changed. Hook, line and sinker. How are you going to explain this to Jimmy? I'm not, just. He 
He's not going to know anything about it. Oh. Did you get it now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I really enjoyed it. It's great to be back behind the wheel again. OK, well, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, eh? OK, fine, thanks. Oh, Mr Lawrence, uh, Mum asked yeah. me if you... Brian will do the thing, OK? Oh, OK. Um, Mum asked me if you could service her car on Wednesday. Do you think you can fit her in? Yeah, no problem. Tell her to bring it in early. It'll be, like, new when we finish with it. OK, you got thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, I wish I had something decent to put on. Seduction over the sausage and chips, eh? Billy, I'll ask Kath to stay for tea, is that all right? Of course you can, yeah. Ta. As a matter of fact, you have mine there. Uh, I'm going down to Linda's now. Oh, uh, Kath, give us a ring about Monday, eh? See ya. Looks like you're going to have a bit of a fight on. Yeah. And I'm going to win. Look, there's no point getting all wound up about it. Serious, though. But you're hardly involved. You told Sergeant Appleby that. Yeah, but the Lyle's doing the interview on Wednesday. He's a top fella. Chief Super in Staffordshire. He does all the inquiries. So what difference does it make? You didn't see anything happen. Of what you told me, nobody touched that fella. What if they don't believe me, though? They will. I'll go get the boot for this. Why? What if I did get the boot? You give me a job, a sack copper. Even being involved might slow me down for a promotion. Are you going to be all right? What if I'm not that way? Are you still going to be here with a sack copper who can't get a job? Or with someone who's just going to have a bobby's wage all his life? Rob, this is stupid. I mean it. What if it all goes wrong? You leave me and all, won't you? Rod? Oh, we managed to get married, eh? Saving up and all that. You just have to tell the truth. You're being soft now. How can they do anything to you when you haven't done anything wrong? I've just got to tell them the truth. Get a wash. You're on nights, aren't you? Oh, that shows how much notice you take. I was taking off them on Monday. Why? That interview for the inquiry. It's today. Oh, uh, Operation Mosset? Yeah. Are you going to be all right? How do I know? You're worried. Look, I was there when this fellow was supposed to be done in. What do you think? Taken to the cleaners. Uh, I think so, no. What about your suit? Uh, what about it? You spilt milk on it, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Well, you're going to need it Monday, aren't you? Am I? Yeah, you're going out for dinner with Kath and Jim. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. 
Ga je. Ik heb een lift. Ik heb naar die breakfast, ja. Yeah. Dat doen we niet. Kom ik gauw? Ik spook zo, ja. Ja, zie je. Zie je. Oh, Billy. Don't forget to ring your Jimmy. Yeah, look, he'll be rings again. Tell him I'll ring tonight. I've still got to fix up the Christmas turkey. Ta-da. Hey, you. Why didn't you say ta-da to Sheila? What? She, you don't even know you've done it. We're in a rush, aren't we? That's no excuse. She's been through a lot of bad times, you know. Now she has to sell her house. The least you could do is make her feel welcome here. Yeah, but how long's she staying? Till she gets fixed up. And when's that gonna be? I'm sick of living on top of everyone else. Well, that can't be helped. So just think about it, will you, and get on with it. Oh, come on, can we just get moving, eh? This is ridiculous. A car salesman being driven to work by his mother. You think you'll enjoy working for Brian? Yeah, he seems OK. Though Dad doesn't approve. Oh? Oh, well, he thinks it's bad form for my mother to go touting for a job for me from a garage owner. They're nothing in common, that's all it is. Well, he'd like him if he got to know Brian. Here you are. You can drive if it makes you feel any better. Thanks for protecting my ego. <laughs> oh, morning. Hey. Late night? Oh, I think I was driving in my sleep last night. Well, after the drop show off, I thought I'd do a bit of extra work. I was out till two. No college. I'm skipping it. I can do some work at home. Hey, did Sue tell you about tonight? Oh, this party thing, yeah. John did say he wanted you to be there. Yeah, well, I'll be here, yeah. Uh, don't mention the word, I'll eh? Where? Well, he's bringing this cat out with him, isn't he? You know, don't mention the war. No, really? Do you think it might bother him if we mentioned it in World War II? Uh, it's just a joke, Cheryl, you know, just a joke. Are you busy today? Uh, I shouldn't think so. <clears throat> Can you get this, please? Oh, eh? I mean, it's all English. Shouldn't we be getting them German stuff? You know, like sauerkraut and things like that. I'm not really into all this. Do you think so? Well, I mean, what if he doesn't like lamb? And if he eats broccoli, we've had it, haven't we? I mean, well, you know these Germans, they love the food, don't they? Oh, do you think he won't like it? Oh, I don't know, but we will ask the questions, eh? Hmm? Ow, ow. Hey, there's no need for the taxi, and I'll run into town. Oh, that'd be nice. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I'm sure, yeah. Is there anything special that you want looking at? No, just a full service. It's quite a shame to bring it in. It's filthy. Ah, oh, don't worry. I'll throw the free valet now, Zach. Oh, no, really. You shouldn't. Ah, oh, it's my pleasure. Do you want to run around the back, please, Gun? Oh, sure. Tell the lads that it's Mrs Collins' car. All right. See you later, on. Bye. Hey, do you mind if we make a phone call first? No, no. OK. Do you want to come into the office? Oh. Have a look at the showroom. Oh, well, very impressive. A splendid floor. Yeah, and it's in such a convenient place. <laughs> well, I'll take a seat. Won't be bad. Don't think I've seen you in your office before. No. Perhaps I should call more often. Hey, not here. Oh, why not? <sighs> it's just business and pleasure, that's why. <sighs> Surely you must understand that. Well, cost oh. me a week's wages. What do you think? Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. You don't like it? Oh, I do. It's fantastic. There's just one problem. I need to take you up a bit. Will you do it? Mm. <sighs> just a guess, but is this the dress you're going to be wearing when you go out with Jimmy and Billy? Not Jimmy, will you get it right? Oh, that's right. You're going out for dinner with Jimmy and Billy, but Jimmy isn't going, right? That's dead right. <laughs> yeah, it'd be me, Billy and Linda. Well, I guess I'll be coming home with Billy. You're very confident. Confident? I know it! Oh, this isn't me, is it? Oh, is you it? look fantastic. Now, just hold it still. <laughs> now, how short do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Billy? Yeah? Have a tea. What do you think? I'll get it. Hey, what are you playing at, soft lad? What are you doing here? Listen, you won't answer your phone, will you? What else could I do, eh? It's knock off. I don't want to know, yeah. Oh. Hey, 
Hey, are you telling me you're turning your nose up at genuine Axminster car for a quid a yard, eh? Keep your voice down, we're gonna work here. Listen, Billy, it's sound stuff, this. It'll look great in your place. What have you told you? I don't want to know. What about Rod? Well, what about him? He need to know. Look, he's on the dole now, are you? Yeah? As far as he's concerned, it's legit, isn't it? No, I said, look, if you want to do us a favour, get us a turkey off that maze of yours. Oh, Billy! You said no, didn't I? Oh, thanks, love. Cheers. Is your friend want one? Hey, He's not my friend, that's me brother, that. Uh, that's Linda, that's Jim. Oh, Alright, pleased He's to meet you. He's not stopped for his tea, either. Oh, that's a shame. See you later. Mate. See you later, love. Hey, what else you been up to then, eh? This and that, you know. No change, eh? How about that? Do you what? I'm keeping well clear, mate. Why is that? After what happened last time, you've got to be joking, haven't you? Have you seen anything of her? A bit, yeah. Oh, aye. Matter of fact, we're going for a meal, you know, that new Indian place down the road and that. Oh, are you now? I was thinking I'm asking you to come along and all. What a threesome! Nah, don't be soft. Linda's coming as well. Here, cop that. Oh. Well, are you coming then, or what? Yeah, don't mind if I do. Right, it's all fixed then, isn't it? Yeah, sounds good to me. Before we have coke then, can you rustle up some tea? Easy, Corkill. Sir. All right, Constable, sit down. Yes, sir. It's been explained to you why you're here. Yes, sir. I don't think you have to say sir quite so often, Sam. <laughs> and there's no need to be so nervous, PC Corkill. It isn't quite an investigation into shoot and kill. It's an investigation into a complaint from a member of the public about activities of officers from this division at an operation last August. Now, you were involved that day, PC Corgill, so I want you to go through all that happened in your own words. You've taken your own statements this time. The constable there will be taking yours. Can it refer to me notebook, sir? Yes. Thank you, sir. But I want it in your own words, PC Corgill. And above all, I want the truth. Well, can we get started? Constable? On the 15th of August last, the duty sergeant on the day shift asked me to take part in Operation Hickory. Well, go on, lad. He can manage. We were asked to rendezvous at a block of council flats in Caradoc Road on the Brimfield Estate. Meteor lunch. By the 
time I reached the top of the stairs and the balcony of the flat, which was being raided, PC Chalkley and PC Peters were leading the prisoner away. The prisoner was taken, handcuffed, to a police vehicle and was driven off. I did not see him subsequently and took no part in charging or questioning him. And that's it, sir. Nothing to add? No, sir. And nothing you want to retract? No, sir. I see. Can I go now, sir? If at any time in the next few days there's something you want to add or delete, don't hesitate to contact us, understood? Yes, sir. Right. You can go now. We'll call you back when we've been through all the statements. Thank you, sir. Hey, Sue. Hiya. Well, here you go. Great. You've got it. Yeah, well, I hope it'll do. Oh, it's fun. I don't know why John never got one of these things. It seems to have uh, everything else. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind me calling you at work. No, it's OK. I was just going out for my lunch and I just slipped home and borrowed it off my mum. Hey, you have to let me give you the cab fare back. No need. No, I insist, because you took your lunch break up and everything, so... All right, I'll let you off with a cup of coffee. Took the afternoon off work. Thought I'd help you with the dinner. Oh, that is great. <laughs> it's a deal. One coffee coming up. I really appreciate this, you know. Oh, it's no problem. I wanted to help. Hey, have you heard any more about this German? Oh, him? No. You're too pushed for time, are you? No, I can spare a minute. Well, there's a lot of stuff inside. <laughs> I would have liked to have asked you along to the Open and Zoo tonight, but... But Gordon will be there. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about Gordon working here. Well, I'm very pleased he's got the job, but after what you said this morning about business and pleasure, don't you think it's a bit dangerous, him being here? Well, there shouldn't be a problem, as long as we're both discreet. Yeah, but are you sure? Well, you hardly ever come here, do you? But I do phone. Maybe it wasn't a good idea after all. But we're both on the bench. We're both friends. Why shouldn't we follow one another? Still, as you say, it is a pity about tonight. Yes, I know. But there will be other times. <laughs> oh, you've got the caterers in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pity you packed in your little business, eh? Mm, isn't it? I don't suppose you'd consider coming out to retirement just for tonight, would you? It'll be the perfect reason for you to be here. Don't tempt me. Yeah, well, worth we'll a try, eh? I do hope it all goes well for you tonight. <sighs> How many are coming? Oh, about 50. It is a pity I haven't got that catering contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must be off. How much do I owe you for the oh, car? Oh, nothing. I'll take care of that. I can't do that. Yes, you can. I insist. Then I accept. Thank you. I hope Terry remembers the shopping. He will. You're confident. He's a good guy, reliable. You don't resent me saying that, do you? No. Not really, no. That's one of the reasons I like him. Other blokes, well, we've all been messed around, I suppose. Right. I don't suppose you could call Jonathan reliable, unless it's in the office. Spontaneous is more the description. At least he sure was in Vancouver. Maybe some of that rubbed off on me when I jumped that flight over here. Do you reckon you'll stay together? I don't know. I don't like to look too far ahead. I enjoy his company. That's all I care about right now. Just let it ride. Yeah, just let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for one of those engagement rings yet. Knowing me, I really would lose it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Terry, thank God. <laughs> Hiya. Hi, hey, you're 
early. Where's the visitor? Am I good enough? Yeah. Mm. There's me busting a gut to get an earlier plane. Oh, I forgot how you feel. Me I too. missed you. Me too. <laughs> uh, hi, Sue. I'll see everything's set for dinner, then. She came over to help. She took the afternoon off. Great. Yeah. Uh, I want to call the office. Now? Yep, a couple of calls and then I'm all yours. Hey, John, you know that German guy, is he coming or what? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, he'll be along later. About seven o'clock. Don't mention the war. Why does everybody keep saying that? Sammy, what are you doing here? Having me tea and waiting for you. For me? Yeah, well, I wanted to show you this before we went to the shop. Oh, the demo in Edinburgh. Love to go. Well, I know it'll cost a lot, but we'll be getting extra hours before Christmas, which means plenty of money. And Christmas means I'll have to work extra hours for my father. Why don't you just ask him? I can't. You see, he still thinks that when I'm at the supermarket working, I'm at the library studying. So I couldn't go to Edinburgh. How do I explain the money? It's not as easy for me, Sammy. My parents aren't as easy going as yours. This and this was a night, I think. You haven't told us his name. His name? Um, uh, Klaus. Klaus? Yeah. Does he speak any English? Mm. <laughs> you mean he doesn't? Well, you know, he's a good listener. <laughs> well, it's going to be a funny kind of dinner party, isn't it? Ah, tea and cup of tea. Mm. Achtung! 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 Jonathan? Uh, He's not here, is he? The German? I mean, no, he's not here yet. Oh, thank God for that. Could have caused a diplomatic incident there. What are these? Bratwurst, uh, sausages, see you. And some mustard to dip them in. Why'd you go getting these, for God's sake? No, 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 they're, they're perfect. They're fine. <laughs> they're class's favourite. Come on, let's give these young lovers some privacy. I have to get changed. Me too. <laughs> see ya. This little John's ass doesn't speak any English. Oh, he's bound to speak to some, isn't he? Well, next to nothing John says. I mean, it's going to be really embarrassing. I've never met a German before, have you? Yeah, they're great. Oh, they love the ale, don't they? Serious. I mean, can you speak it? Eh, uh, ich mocht ein Bier, but I see it's amazing what you pick up on all of these skin holidays. It's heavy. Hey, I mean, can't we just freak it out a bit? Oh, why? Well, you just won't feel comfortable, that's all. Oh, come on, we'll have a laugh. Oh, please, tell me. <sighs> if you're really sure. Don't fancy it, that's all. Nice. Won't see Jonathan there. It's always parents that cause us the trouble. Do you want my just done? Bought our house. So that means I'll have to share a bedroom with our Casey forever. You're lucky, you know. I have to share with three of my sisters. Three? Yeah. Flat's really small. And my dad says I can't buy a house. All the money's got to go into the business. Your family? Well, they sound so free and easy. I suppose it could be worse. Look, but why don't you come round to ours after work? I can kick off Casey out and we'll play some tapes in my room. Oh, I wish I could. But the shop doesn't shut until 11. And I am expected there. Until that time? Sorry, the dad wants me to. So it was just a wind-up? Yeah, of course it was. It's Martin Howes. He starts the Liverpool office next week. His German's as bad as mine. <laughs> it's just that she was a bit worried, that's all. Well, she'll laugh her head off when he comes in. She knows him from ages back. Right. Uh, keep it going, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, does Cheryl know? No, 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 she doesn't. You keep her kissing, too. So, uh, what's been happening, then? Anything exciting? Uh, well, I've got engaged. <coughs> what? Why? Why didn't you tell me? All those phone calls, you never told me these two have got engaged. I forgot. I haven't even got yet, Prezi. Mm. Congratulations. Terry, you have picked yourself a good one. Congratulations. Well done. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Ace. Hello, Ace. How'd it go, then? Just have to make a statement. Is that all? You don't know yet? Could take weeks. I've got to be interviewed next week. You did all right then? I don't know. Listen, uh, do you have anything to do with this fella getting worked over? No. You sure about that, are you? 
Oh, come off it, Dad. I don't go in for all that. It wouldn't be the first time the police have been involved in something like this. Yeah, well, I wasn't. And your mates were. Is that it? Whose side are you on? What's that mean? Am I on your side or on the busy side? Will you tell me what you mean? Just that, yeah. I'm on your side, but I feel sorry for the fellow who was worked over. Who said he was worked over? Oh, there must be some suit in it, mustn't he? Otherwise, he wouldn't have made a complaint. Look, this fella had done armed robberies. He put one of the lads in Aussie for weeks. And that makes it all right, does it? I didn't say that. All right, all right. Best of luck with it all, eh? Are you sure it's a wind-up? Oh, I've told you, he's not German, he's English. Oh, the rotten swine. I wouldn't have known what to say to him if he was. Well, it's all right, OK. Come on then, you two. Grab yourselves a drink, come through. You'll be here in a minute. Mm -hmm. There he is now. Can't beat his Germans for punctuality, can you? Now, start practising. Good Abend, mine here. Thank you. Don't mention the war. There you go. Here's your wife. Cheryl, this is Martin. Hello. I've but heard a lot about you. You said he was... <laughs> Come on, then, you two. Klaus is dying to meet you. Come on, Terry. <laughs> Fool you. All right. Sue. I'm sorry. I've got to go. Sorry. Sorry. Sue! You don't know when this afternoon, do you? Oh, all right then, yeah. Thanks very much. You ring me. There you go. I hope it's even. Of course it's even. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have been if I'd had anything to do with it. I thought you might have changed mm. your mind. What about? About tonight. You still haven't mentioned this meal to Jimmy? No. I'm supposed to have done. You're supposed to have done. But what are you going to say when he doesn't turn up? I'll make out that he stood me up. That bit doesn't worry me. Will you listen to him? I've told him I'd do that. I'll just slip upstairs and tick him off. <laughs> you get to work. You'll have your chance tonight. Tough, I see. You look great. Pity Jimmy won't we'll be there to see us. Billy! Uh, I said I'd do that for you when you've gone. Oh, well, I don't want you to feel like you got to. I feel that. like it. Great. Uh, thanks for picking up the soup, by the way. Oh, have they made a good job of it? Fine, yeah. Yeah, look, I'm going to a mate after work to do his Christmas lights, so I'll probably go on to the restaurant straight from there. There's bound to be somewhere I can change. Did you ask your rod to clear his floor? Yeah, he's had a sort out as well. Uh, stuff behind the door, that's for slinging. Should be in a carrier. Okay, look Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this meal. I hope our Jimmy behaves himself, otherwise he's blown his chances with Kathy. I wasn't really sure at first when she came up with the idea whether they wanted to kiss and make up or whether she wanted another fight on her hands. You haven't heard a word, have you? Oh, I'm sorry. It's, um, Rod's Hill programmes. He had a competition with Damon so he could collect the most. Rod's lost interest now. 
It's just that it's a year ago. It's a year today since he died. That's why I was up early. I went to mass with Matty. Bob's still in Poland. Must be the juniors. They all look... They're so young. All young hopefuls, eh? Look, uh, Rotten Trace you out tonight. Maybe it's just scrub brownish, merely. Oh, you can't do that, Kath. I'd never forgive me. Why? Never mind. You go, I'll be all right. I'm going out with Matty anyway. Sammy's babysitting, so... I'll have to go however I feel. As long as you won't be on your own. I don't know, sometimes you feel a need to be, don't you? I mean, there are a lot of people in church this morning. When they read Damon's name out, it was just one, one name amongst many. I just felt so far away from it all. So far away from God, I suppose. Hey, look, I've got to get in now. I don't know why I'm doing this now. Oh, why? What time do you call this, eh? I'm off to work now. I just wanted to catch you. Well, why didn't you phone? Because I was at home this morning. My mum was fussing around. Yeah, I know a phone's work. A bit sudden, this, isn't it? This cold you're supposed to have. Well, I got wet going home last night, and I didn't really sleep all that well, but I'm all right, really. Oh, why? Yeah. Good, cos I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. I really am. Look, sorry's not good enough. It's explanations that I want. How do you think I slept last night? <sighs> Terry, look, I can't talk properly now. I just came to say that I'll come round tonight. What do you mean you can't talk properly? What have you come round here for to wind me up? Yeah, but not out here in the cold. I mean, with people around. All right, let's go in the house, then. Yeah, but I've got to go to the office now. I mean, the time. Look, five get... minutes. That's all it'll take. Get in the car. Five minutes. All right. Look, I want to tell you properly. I mean, so that you'll understand. <sighs> it's all right. I'm not stupid, you know. I know there must have been someone. I have had the odd fling myself. So don't say I won't understand. Except this wasn't just a fling, was it? No, it wasn't just a fling. At John Jonathan's firm in the summer in June. Well, I'd done a secretarial course and... Well, law was new to me, you see, and the setup seemed so formal and so frightening. I was only 20. So what's this got to do with him? Martin was the only one there who d didn't look down on me and make jokes. I mean, the others made me feel more stupid than I really was, and he covered up for me and he was kind. Well, eventually I settled down. I got more confident. I did quite well, but then it was too late. So you fell from. So what's wrong with that? He was married, wasn't he? Look, let me tell you later. Oh, it's all right. I know all about it. He was a married man. You had a fling with him. I mean, you had this scene with him, didn't you? You had an affair with him. Yeah. And how long did that go on? Four years. No more. I was 25 when he went away to London. I was only 20 when we met. I mean, how did you manage all that time? Where did you meet? I had a flat. Oh, so he used to go and see you there, did he? On certain days. Every week? More or less. For five whole years? Look, I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't want to talk cooped up like this. We're supposed to be engaged now. Don't you think I've got a right to know? I said I'd come round tonight. I promise you I'll see you then, all right? You better not bottle out. You better be here tonight. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Hello, Matty. How are you, Paul? Nobody in, I'm afraid. Yeah, they must have popped out. Well, how are things going? Oh, not too bad. No work yet, but I'm keeping myself busy, you know. I'm even doing a few O-levels. Oh, good man. Wish I could say the same. These wintry days seem endless, don't they? That's because you're idle, Paul. The more you do, the more you feel like doing. Come in and have a cup of tea. I, I need to post this letter first. I, uh, only come round to see Sheila. Well, you just missed her. She went out five minutes ago. Damon died 12 months ago, you know. Oh, yes. I saw her in church, and she looked a bit down. What with Bobby being away and that, I thought... Thought you ought to look after her, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. Still, we're going out tonight. Oh. Come on. I'll walk you down, and I'll tell you all about this year's marathon. Blister by blister. Oh. 
Thank you, God. Thank you for getting me through the last year. Help me. Help Claire and Karen, Barry. Karen's so independent now, I hardly ever see her. I worry about Barry. I can't help him, but I want to all the time. I have such bitter thoughts. I feel so bitter about Bob. I needed him here today. I just felt so lonely amongst all those people. I miss Damon so much. You see, you see, I keep thinking he's gonna walk in through the back door. I know I can't keep looking back, but I just can't help it. Help me to be stronger. Help me to be more hopeful about the future. Stomach. What's this? She's worried she gets drunk. I'll oh, throw up, do you? No, I do not. Should I sit there down a bit? Well, I can't help it. I just get randy. I say the most horrendous things. I can't wait. I might say, what about do? Why don't we order now? I think we've waited long enough. Give it another five minutes, eh? Oh, we won't come, Jimmy won't. Oh, he's late, that's all. What do you mean? I mean, he stood me up. I'm not bothered. I wouldn't have him back, you see, so he wanted to get even with me. Because he knows how much I wanted him to be here tonight. Did you hope to be reconciled? Over this very table, yeah. Oh, that's awful if he doesn't show. It's very painful for her, Billy. Yeah, well, let's not get carried away, eh? I wasn't sure how he did feel, to be honest. Well, it's a love-hate relationship, you know? It's when there's passion there. That's when it's hardest of all to break. Is that right? Well, yeah. All right, girls. Hey, sorry I'm late. I went and uh, drowned myself, you know, in that body lotion stuff. Well, honest to God, you wouldn't believe it. I stank okay. that much. I had to go and wash it all off, didn't I? Hey, mind you, it lingers, doesn't it, that stuff? What do you think? Oh, very nice. How did you get here? I was invited, wasn't I? Hey, don't say that you're not pleased to see me, Cathy. Rose of the tote, love of my life, eh? Well, of course she's pleased to see you. She thought you'd stood her up. I bet you're dead happy now, eh? What are you up to? Let's have your help. Oh, the floor's soaking wet. Coming. Hi. Claire's in the bath. She's made a flood. I need a clock. Well, I'll go up. She loves a bad time, doesn't she? So do I. Oh, yeah, it's a novelty, isn't it, once in a while? You want to try doing it every night and on your own. Hey! I hate this house. Why can nobody leave a cloth upstairs? Well, why didn't you? Because it's not my house. Because their things aren't my things. And because they're such a cockeyed crew. If I left one up there, somebody would move it. Oh, it's on it for a little while, she. Oh, is it, Matty? You know what he said in the letter. He's not going to have any money by Christmas. And he hasn't paid the mortgage for the last three months. Oh, I see. It's Bobby you're getting at, is it? He runs away to Poland, doesn't he? He runs away from what he feels. He should have been in that church today, not you. It was his son, for pity's sake. But no, he knows he can rely on you, doesn't he? Good old Matty, he'll stand in for me. Hey, I went to that mass for me. Nothing to do with him. And I wouldn't leave that child up there on her own. She's not old enough. I was on my own. She made a flood. What am I supposed to do? Divide myself in two? Yes, I could call in tomorrow. No problem, matron. Huh? We'll discuss a few ideas, eh? Bye-bye. Your mother left five minutes ago. We'll wait and eat together. You rang the nursing home, did you? Why not? I knew that's where she'd be. Your mother's lined me up to help them with their Christmas do. You sound quite keen. Well, I met Matty this afternoon. A hive of energy, lots to tell. Yours truly, not a thing. And you don't mind it came from Mum, without her even consulting you? Well, what are you trying to say? Suits her, yes, to keep me busy while she's in this frenetic mood. 
I'm 13 years older than your mother, and now it tells, that's a fact. But the point is how I deal with it. You know, I did manage the marathon, Gordon. I'm not finished yet. Ah, and this smells pretty good. Listen, all the food's got funny names. You can't get away from that, you know. But it's racist to say they're funny. Don't be soft. Listen, yeah, look, imagine, right, that it's the 2.30 race, OK? In line for home now, two to go. Papa Dam leads Vindaloo from Biryani. Behind comes Rogue and Josh. Chapati, exponents. Gosh on the outside. Exponents and depression. Gosh is clear. Gosh on the line now. Go be gas. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take him anywhere. They are. That shows them right, doesn't it, eh? Oh, I'm sorry. No. I mean, what's wrong with eggs and spinach? We have eggs and spinach. You were all mixed up together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We mixed ours up as all right, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll do the same. I've eaten mine. Oh. Give it off yours. Give it off. Watch it, yeah. Cups of that. It's off. Mm. Don't want you getting air cups again, do we? Oh, I don't know. You could put your key down the back and get it back again. Yeah. His wife, did she know about you? Well, she must have done. Oh, and you never thought how she must feel? Well, I finished it, you know. Oh, yeah, you never told me why. I have. Oh, he was going off to London and he wanted you to go with him, but you said no because... Because London seemed the ideal chance for him to leave his wife, but no. Well, he wanted me in London, but with the setup just the same. I thought it could have gone on for years. Waiting for the door, for the phone to ring. If he was ever late, I couldn't catch him at work. I felt sick sometimes by the time he came from thinking that he wouldn't. Feeling I had no right to exist. But what happened later on? You know, after his marriage bust up, I mean, I thought he would have sent for you, you know, saying, I'm free, my darling, come at once. Well, that's news to me. You what? I didn't know it had bust up. <laughs> I don't believe you. Well, it's true. I never heard from him after he left. His marriage bust up in London before he went to Germany. How do you know? Well, I asked John, did you think I wasn't going to ask any questions? No. Well, there you go. No wife. Played your cards wrong, didn't you? Should have gone to London with him. Who knows? You could have been married to him by now. Yeah, but I'm engaged to you. I want to be engaged to you. But I don't know you, do I? This person waiting for the door. This person he'd set up in some flat. That's not the person that I know. Yes, but the flat was mine. You were in a flat with these girls and he'd persuade you to move. That's what you just told me now. Yeah, I know that, but I used to pay the rent. Oh, so he could have you to himself on tap a quickie twice a week. It wasn't like that. No, I know it wasn't. Because you were not to bar them, weren't you? You must have been to put up with that, being used like that part-time shares in someone else's fella. Yeah, but I had my work and I had lots of friends. My life just didn't revolve around him, you know. Sex. All about sex, wasn't it? You couldn't keep your hands off him. But it's years ago. You're punishing me for years ago. Don't be stupid. The man's back. He's here in Liverpool and he's ditched his wife. Didn't know that. Well, you do now, don't you? And what happens when you see him? You run out the door, then you're up half the night crying over him. Do you think someone's done that over me? You must be joking. Don't say that. I pinned a lot on you. I really did. But you still can, Terry. I mean, you still can. How? How can I after this? She gone off? She's lovely. You're very lucky, she. They dance that easier for me. Well, you know. Oh, come on. You don't ever really think that, do you? I think a lot of nasty things. I think they're about me, about Bob, even about you. Hark at what I said before. Oh, forget that. I said it, though, didn't I? Here's me thinking I was all calm getting back from church this afternoon. One little thing back here and I'm thrown. You go four steps forward and you slip two back. You're getting over years, not weeks, she. Yeah, I know. I keep thinking about all the turning points. Claire, who Bob didn't want. Vasectomy. Me getting into all this. If only we could have met halfway. I mean, some couples, you see, you wonder how they got together in the first place, but not me and Bob. Yeah. Was I jealous of Damon and Debbie? What? 
Maybe I couldn't bear the thought of seeing them so happy day in, day out under my nose, knowing how things were with me and Bob. Oh, come on, your thoughts were on your own marriage, Mo. And they had their own lives to live. All the same, Matty, I didn't value him enough. I didn't value him enough. All right, that may be true. But I'll tell you the lesson from that. Don't ever do that to her and there. Don't ever wish her away, or even half wish her away the way you just did. I'm only being realistic, she ties me. She'll be your salvation, she. I don't live through my kids anymore. How can you when they disappoint you or they die? Come on. Sheila, come here. Every month that child is different, not just grown. She sees more, she understands more. It's amazing the way she goes forward, she. Forward all the time. Go with her, she's taking you. Can't you see? That's how you'll get through it. And your books. And the church. And the church. And all that strength you've got in there. Yeah, you can't fail, woman. <laughs> You're right. We've got to look forward. Let's go and celebrate, eh? It's a year since we met, you know. Thereabouts. I was just thinking how well you've done. Yeah, I've an unqualified job. And what's one year in five? Look, I meant every word, Terry. I want the engagement to go on. And what happens if he sniffs around? What happens if he comes chasing after you? You're going to slam the door in his face. No, you see, the thing is, women, they don't sweat as much as fellas do. No, they don't, honest, no, they just give off and eat. They sort of, like, you know, radiate it. They can run for miles, you know, and they don't dehydrate. You know a lot, Jimmy, don't you? Well, he's a mine of information here. Life's never dull. You're always learning something. Like, uh, what fell off a lorry and where? No, be fair, Billy. Hey. He picks things up. That's what I mean. <laughs> No, facts, information, like she says. What the hell is he spending sitting in bars? He's a very entertaining bloke. Yeah. There you go. Hey, and if that doesn't work, I'll fan you with me breath. Mm. Watch out for the curry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like a fella doing natural scent. And I don't mind that one little bit. Ah, well, that's the turn on, isn't it, eh? Mm -hmm. Haven't you cooled off, yes? No. Oh. Actually, I could do with stripping off. Oh, I right, hey. Well, don't mind me, then. <laughs> Nothing would come. It's all got stuck. I'll just have to peel it off for you, then, at night, you know, we're layer by layer. Oh, Jimmy, you'll embarrass me. Uh, refreshment once a day. Yeah. You can see now what she meant before, the way she can get when she's had a few drinks. There's no harm. I mean, we're doing all right, aren't we? Cheers. Cheers. Aye, aye. Penny for them. Oh. No, I was just, uh, I was just thinking about curries, you know, why do they have them where it's hot? Well, it's to make them sweat, isn't it? You know, uh, get rid of the heat and the... Well, if you hadn't had the curry in the first place, you wouldn't have so much heat to lose, would you? Oh, uh, brains, eh? Brains and looks. You're a stunning you, you know. Yes, well, it's chicken and the egg, really, isn't it? Eggs, eh? They're supposed to be an aphrodisiac. Yeah, they're meant to be binding, too. Oh. Right, I need the loot and then we're off, eh? Yeah, I like that, enough. You what? I mean, pay, just shut off the areas, you? But you can't just go. Not now. Oh, don't be silly. How are you two going to sort things out with us two playing gooseberry? I mean, you did say that's why you're here. You do want to be reconciled. There he is. There's your table. See ya. What a nerve. What a fantastic woman. Yeah. Well, what have you got a gob on you for? As if I didn't know. Well, if you know, why do you ask? Oh, come on, Cathy, don't be like that, eh? Listen, the scram was good, wasn't it, eh? Exotic. Besides, you and me, that's bedrock, isn't it, eh? That's where the magic is, Cath. But it's proven, isn't it? Old. Listen, you're the only one that understands me, Cathy. I reckon this turned out for the best, all this. Hasn't turned out anyway, yet. You are? Listen, she's got him exactly where she wants him. For tonight. You and I, Billy, forget it. 
Well, that's not what you said before. Remember what you said when you were pissed. Listen, Kathy, forget it, I'm telling you. That woman is one sexy lady. Well, thanks, Jimmy. Oh, no, I didn't mean that you're not you sexy. You did mean, but don't you worry. It makes me even more determined. It may be blown tonight, but there'll be others. <sighs> Just you wait and see. Slow down, will you? Stop fussing. I don't need all these prices now. Ring me about it later, eh? Well, it's just that I'm taking a break for lunch and I ought to be away, all right? Look, Gordon will make a note for me. Hang on. It's Malcolm Clark. Take down those figures and leave them out for when I get back. What time? Uh, 2.15. But if anybody rings, tell them 2.30. Uh, see you. Hello, Mr. Clark. Gordon Collins. Uh, well, I don't know if he'll go to the auction himself. He could be sending someone. Should I check? Yeah, it's just this minute left. I'll try and catch him. OK, I'll call you back. Bye-bye. The problem's Terry, I suppose. Yeah. I know we come from different worlds, you know, but I like him. He's a friend. I think Sue's good for him. Are you saying that Martin wants you back? I don't know. If only she hadn't got so upset. That's been the turn on, I'm sure. I may be wrong, but I think Martin thinks he's in with a chance. He wants to uh, drag me in on it. You know, use me somehow to get it through. That's what lunch would have been about. I'm pretty sure of that. Oh, fair enough. I don't want to get involved either. But don't you think Sue should decide? I mean, if she wants to see him again, I can understand that. Well, I can understand it. I think it was hard on Terry. Why? Because they're engaged. I was engaged to Ben. <laughs> that is different. That is quite different. Well, I'm just saying, John, that it didn't stop you then. So how can you judge Martin now? I don't judge him. But you do. You think he should just walk away. But I say let Sue decide. That is far too simple. Why? Because if it comes to a fight, he's got an unfair advantage. Yeah, he's older, he is more sophisticated, he is a man of the world. I can think of somebody else that description fits, and he ended up being the loser. I wish you wouldn't keep bringing that out. Well, if it's relevant, then... Well, it's not. For one thing, I will not have myself compared with Martin House. Cup of tea, Trace. Yeah, I want to get started on your hair, though. I'll do yours if you want to cut this grey conditioner. Oh, it's your afternoon off. Yeah, well, I mean, I got me these things in town, so I said I'd give her a nice set. <laughs> Are you let her, Kath? I would. she give you a trim as well. Tidy it up a bit for you. Well, you think I need it, do you? Go on, it's a good idea. Oh, you just want me out of your kitchen. Whose kitchen, did you say? The kitchen, then. Well, it isn't his. You're on, let's go. You do it first, and I'll have my cup of tea. If he 
you don't mind me being here. I mean, I'm only family, of course. Billy did ask me, Julia. It's only a stopgap. Mm. I noticed you put up your cross. I don't think it's doing any damage. No, I was just thinking, that's all. You do still follow your religion. Any reason why I shouldn't? I always thought with Catholics that once they got married, it was for life. It is. I think it's unfortunate myself that people don't work at the marriages more. It just needs a bit of give and take and a bit of determination. That's all. Oh, I see. Maybe you should have told that to your daughter. Yeah, he wants to know if you'll be at the auction. One old woman in. Oh, no, yeah, I'll phone him later. Anything else? Yes, I'd, I'd like to have a talk. Oh, let me guess. Too many orders coming in, eh? I'm not paying you enough respect. Couldn't care less how you treat me. It's how you treat my mother. I'd like to know what's going on. I'll speak to you later, OK? Preferably not out here. Why not? They all know about it. I said I will speak to you later in the office. As soon as I've finished here, OK? Which way in? Uh, around the back. I'll manage you with the door. Uh, got some papers on the dash. Could you get them for us? Yeah, sure. What brought this on? Ah, uh, Climbo, I suppose. The feeding of the 5,000. Jamie might show, and Cathy might get back with Jimmy. It's a big mite. She's here now, and your mother-in-law. Right, so dump these, then I'm off before she can start any models. You give us a lift, I've got a pick now. You should learn to drive, Mrs. Grant. I did have a go once. Well, ask me when I'm not so pushed, eh? Okay. If I don't go now, there'll be blood spilt. Yours or Julie's? Julie's, of course. I've been to keep fit. It's only because Gerard's away that I'm off this afternoon. See, when he's away, we can swap round, but he comes back on Friday, so we have to make the time up. Yeah, That's your dad's voice. Yeah, well, he does pop back now and again. Same as with me. You'll have to make it up later tonight. Well, this could come off now, couldn't it? No, leave it. Oh, it's been on ages, Trace. Yeah, no, but you have to give it time to work. What's the point in her doing it if you're going to end up looking like you did before? Ask him if he's in for his tea and I'll stop and cook it for you if you're is. OK. And don't be long. And don't let him come up. I think I'll call on Ralph and Harry later. It's best before it's slept on, isn't it? What do you think? <sighs> My nan wants to know if you'll be here for your tea because she said she'd cook it. Probably, yeah. Uh, well, depends what Linda's got lined up. What work or going out? Well, it could be either. She gets me work and we go out. Why, what's the matter with that, eh? Got any objections, have you? Oh, God! Oh, what's that now? You knew you'd put these potatoes in the wrong place. Well, when you come and get me, I'd have moved it for you. There's too many women in this house. Yeah. All with minds of their own. Oh, the house is crawling with women. Potatoes? Yeah. Some women I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get the picture. You caught the lads mucking about. You sure to pick me up for lunch. Well, I think that's enough myself. Enough for what? Enough for me to ask what's going on. All right, what do you want to know? Are you having an affair with my mother? Yeah, I am. So what? So what? I'm trying to be straight with you, yeah. So what? Yes, we are having an affair. We're both very happy. We don't intend to stop. And if you don't say anything to your dad, and I don't say anything to your mum about this conversation now, I don't see any reason why things should change. But our parents... I'm... I mean, think about dad. That's your mother's responsibility, isn't it? Right now, she happens to be very happy. I'd say it was up to her. Unless, of course, you decide to blurt everything out, in which case you're going to cause one hell of a lot of damage. Blackmail. Ah, oh, come on. Stop saying mum and I'll tell. What's that one to tell on? I mean, that's what you came in here to say, isn't it? And my job? You start showing results and you stay. <laughs> yeah, but now I know about it. That makes no difference. 
Unless, of course, you decide to bubble us. However, if that's what you do decide to do, just give us a bit of notice, eh? It's your decision, Gordon. It's up to you. After Martin went away to London, and I was on my own in the flat, I mean, without him coming round anymore, I got really depressed and I didn't eat. I got these terrible mouth ulcers that didn't help, and one cold after another. My mum came round one day and she said, Come home, we'll get you right, you know, look after you. So I let her. <laughs> she never said a word about what had happened, never even mentioned Martin's name. I think deep down she knew. And you just stayed at home? Well, as soon as I was well again, they said they'd miss me if I left, so. Well, I decided to sell the flat, which was the best thing, because it reminded me of Martin. Then I started to work for a new boss, your Jonathan. That was nice. On Sundays, I went with my mum to church, met Terry, and I think you know the rest. Oh, it's been a really happy year. Well, apart from all that Donna business, but I don't really think that was such a big deal. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I don't. I was too busy falling for John. It's nice just to natter on. Terry gave me such a hard time the other night. He's working late. Stay. You're welcome. Thanks. I thought you came up here to clear this up. Your Uncle Jimmy's been on the phone again. Madame put the phone down on him once. But you know your Uncle Jimmy. He's very thick-skinned, even for a cork, yeah? Didn't know Cathy was still here. She's been reading those Hindu stories. The things those gods get up to, I don't know. Well, try and keep this room nice, Tracy, will you, love? It's not fair on your dad if you don't. And my dad's not bothered. Oh, here on the floor. <sighs> he wants to move out. This house isn't big enough. Linda wants him to move out anyway. Well, you got that wrong. There's brochures downstairs with notes on saying love, Linda. A house for them? He stays tonight. And don't try and talk to him because he's always with Linda. Oh, he put you first, though, Tracy. I mean, not me. I know he's got no time for me. That's why everyone gets to live down the stairs, except for me that should. No one put me first. No one said Jamie could live in the extension. He ended up on the couch. He's got a bed now, though, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's got a bed in Glasgow. What use is that to me? Oh, cheer up, Trace. You're doing well at work. And you made a superb job of me. And even she's a bit improved. It's not the work. Which it's Jared. Comes back off his holidays next week and I'm dreading it. But he thinks well of you, you said. He likes you. Yeah, not in the right way. Oh, um, you mean... Yeah. He keeps trying to get a grip of me and that and trying to make it not look like that, but that's what it is, really. And then coming up behind me, and honestly, it just makes me sick. Well, um, maybe you ought to tell someone. I mean, I know you're telling me. I was going to tell my dad, but he might kick off. I don't want him to do anything stupid. Anyway, he's got other things on his mind at the moment. Well, I tell you what. Be practical. Go easy during working hours. Try not to provoke him. Nan? No, I don't mean by your behaviour. I'm thinking more about what you wear. We wear what he tells us to wear. If he asks us to wear our overalls short, then that's how we have to wear them. It's an age-old problem, this look. Different to us, aren't they? Do you know, I remember reading once the number of times a day they get, um, um, well, you know. And when you think of how often we get waked up... Well, I only came up to ask about your tea. We don't want none. I'm going to go out with Nicky from work. You do that, love. And listen, don't worry about that, Linda. She's just a passing thing, I'm sure. Don't you worry about a thing. You're a lovely girl. 
And you spoil your looks. No man's worth that, and no job's worth it either. So, cheer up. What will be, will be. All right? Yeah. Yes, of course I'm glad. And it's what I wanted, silly. Look, I think the plan will work very well. I think everyone will be happy. Yes, I can. Oh, hi. Who? Your father. Who do you think? He's having supper with Gran and Mr Fallon. Paul, I'll see you later. Give my love to Mother. And him too. <laughs> Bye. No, I just wondered, with you taking the call up here, I was up here when it rang, that's all. And I don't know what you mean by that. Your private room? Where you make your private calls? But not so private that you feel the necessity to knock. Oh, I'm sorry, perhaps I should go out and start again. What's wrong? You're in a very odd mood this evening? No. So what did Dad want? I told you. He's eating there. He's also had a long chat with Matron. He's going to help them with their Christmas do. Well, that way, Mother won't feel neglected and Matron will think we're involved. Debris one leaves lying around. I, I mean, I really ought to throw it away. You're very quiet this evening. How's the romance? Romance? Gran and Mr Fallon, didn't you just... Uh... Oh, yes, of course. Going along very well. I mean, there can be no harm in it. I think a romance can be a, a joyful sort of thing. Hi. Uh, could I talk to Sue? What makes you think she's here? I rang her home. My mother said she'd called round. I'd like to talk to her if I could. I haven't come to upset her again. I've come to say I'm sorry if that's what bothers you. I'm expecting John back from work very soon. I understand. If you don't think you can ask me in, could you at least tell her I'm here? Yeah, I'll do that. See you now, Mr. Yeah, Charlotte. Now, you ring up if you're going to be late and get your dad to fetch you home. And don't walk down any dark alleyways. Hi. I've come to apologise. If I'd have known you were going to be there or your friend, I'm sorry, I had no idea. Doesn't matter. It's done now. It's cold. Come talk in the car. She's done a great big hot pot. It's huge. Hang on. Uh, Billy won't be back for anything to eat. She's bearing down on me. She wants the phone. It's me here. Uh, you wouldn't be dining with Linda by any chance, would you? Well, listen here, Billy Corkill. I'm taking this meal over to Ralph and Harry, where I'll get some appreciation. So if your clever clogs lodger comes back with a poor, neglected child, they can sort themselves out. Linda. Who else? What do you reckon's with her? Not much. Think she's any good for him? I wouldn't know. All I know is that Trace is upset about her, and she's my main concern. You wouldn't do us a favour, would you, Julia? You see, well, I've got reasons of my own for wanting Linda out the way. Well, she's not his type. You know, she's not caring enough about his family and his needs and so on. Well, if he's set on it, what can we do? Put him off her. How? Oh. We'll find ways. Well, all I know, if they go and buy a house, I wouldn't get a look in. Whereas if he's still here and her holiness moves out, I've still got some hopes of that room. True. She's common, if you ask me. Not like Irene. <sighs> Why did they have to split up, eh? To go and do that to the kids. Poor Tracy growing up having to face all sorts on her own. I mean, what can I do to help? I could think of a way you could help. You could help me put the kibosh on Linda. Oh, what if Billy? He won't know. Oh, but I've got to keep him with him. True. But it's like he said. If they go after a house, you'll lose your granny flat. 
what I got to lose. We're on then, eh? We managed for about six months in London. But Janice hated it. She couldn't settle. Coming on top of everything else. Well, anyway, finally she went back to her mother in Sheffield. She's there now. I think the kids missed me when I went to Hamburg. I saw them the other week. They're fine. Janice is seeing someone. She's OK. She works part-time. Good schools. Kids tramp the moors a lot. They've grown like giants. Why didn't you tell me that you'd split up? You'd finish with me, so'd she. Didn't do my ego much good. I didn't fancy getting knocked back twice. I did ring you one night. I rang the flat. Someone said, uh, hang on, I'll turn the music down. There was obviously a party going on. I thought, she's made it, she's come through. She's not going to want to know anymore. So I hung up. It must have been the new people. I was living at home then. It must have been after we sold the flat. <laughs> That's amazing. So what about Germany? Well, I had the chance to go there and I jumped at it. I got myself together there, I think. I hope. I certainly feel better now than when I went. Did you ever mean to leave Janice? Oh, yes, I meant it. I just never could. It took her to do it. He's been a bit cool since the other night. Yeah, well, he knows Terry. Yeah, Jonathan said he's a really decent bloke. Yeah, we're engaged. He told me. Have you... I mean, have you explained about me? Yes, well, I've tried, but... Well, I hate talking in cars, and here I am again. Funny. Jonathan's car just now. The light across your face. It reminded me of before you got the flat. The car would pass by and we'd stop. Talking in circles, like we are again. That. And the odd kiss. You want to go in? Say if you do. No, it's all right. I used to feel really close to you in the car. Like it was our world somehow. The only one we had. I remember I always used to ask you if you were cold. Sort of ritual. Why didn't you like the flat? Oh, I like the flat. I started to take it for granted. The peace. The quiet and the peace. Bloody chaos home. You never said that, ever. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have seemed fair somehow. I mean, kids can't help it being loud. It would have seemed disloyal. <laughs> Strange. I don't think you ever really understood it. How torn I could be. Oh, be careful you don't spill it. It's all right for you. This is burning hot. You know, there's far too much here to feed to old men. Oh, I'll tell you, enjoy this, tell you. <laughs> Stay over sometimes, do you? Yeah. God, I've cupped things up. For years, you wanted me to make the break. It happened. Now I'm free and you're the one with a ring on your finger. I used to hate you touching me sometimes because I'd feel your wedding ring. In the book once, there were these tiny little spades, buckets and spades. I knew you'd all been to Southport on the Sunday. But just seeing them, just so much of it hurt me, you see. That's why I just couldn't go on. Let me see you again. I can't ever make up, I know, for making such a mess of things. I mean, I wouldn't hurt you again. It's the last thing I want. You say that now, but... Just once or twice. 
Just to see you once or twice. For old time's sake. Visiting, aren't you? I was just passing. No one's just passing now, it's close. Anyone who think you were glad to see me? Just surprised, that's all. What are you looking at? Nothing. It's because of the move, isn't it? Um, what move? What move? The Rogers move when I was in the new family moving in. Well, you couldn't miss that, ma'am. It's better than a funeral or a wedding. Oh, don't be so cheeky. Hey, I wonder what it is, though. It's all been very mysterious. A top brain surgeon, Harry said. Could be foreign. Oh, you could be the first customer. What do you mean? I'm only messing. <laughs> what do you think of me here, Nan? I think it's all right. Do you like it? Well, it's all right. I fancy a change, though, and I don't know what to do. Well, you're working in the right place to get it done, aren't you? And they don't like us doing each other's hair. It's pigs of the job. Do you think you can do mine again soon? You made a smashing job of it last week. Yeah, if you come round tomorrow, I'll be on half day. Oh, great. Thanks, Trace. It's all right. See you now. To our love. Make yourself a drink or something. I will. And have a nice day. I'll try. See ya. Yeah, see you, love. <sighs> Katie, will you stop sniffling and get your coat on? But am I? Oh, Katie, for the last time, you are not adopted. Well, if I was, well, I'd rather now. Look. If I was going to adopt a child, I can positively say that it wouldn't be you. <gasps> uh. Get off! Right. Who told her she was adopted? Do you not think you could act a little more maturely? Don't you think that was a very cruel thing to say? Not half as cruel as you saying you wouldn't have picked her to adopt if you had the choice. Right, out. You get to school. Do you think I'd have picked any of you if I'd known how you were going to turn out? Katie, will you get a move on, please? Yeah, the orphan just come forward in five minutes. Oh, out! I hate you! Katie, come on. Have a nice day. I bet my real mum's a princess. I bet she's not just ordinary. Bye bye, love. Bye, Mrs. Rogers. Excuse me, could I have a word? Not now, Mr. Cross. Do you want some advice? Can I afford it? Can you not afford it? Go on, then. Ex nihilo and nihil. Out of nothing, nothing comes. Oh, I see. So if I sit around all day, then I'll get nowhere. Absolutely. Look, do yourself some justice. Lay it on the line with Sue. I don't know why I should listen to you anyway. You're the one that brought that Martin fella around here. Well, he'd have turned up soon enough. I mean, who the hell do these people think they are, eh? I'm not having her mess me around like that. I want us to get married, and I want us to be engaged now. But she's got to make her mind up. Like I've got to make my mind up about making a proper living in that. What's wrong with being a taxi driver? Nothing. 
as long as I can make a decent standard of living out of it and not just a scratching. I've got to get myself onto the black cabs. That's what I've got to do. So do it. Just watch me. And I hope you're going to clear that mess up before you go. Children. Well, I know they're not here. Tracy's gone to work. Yeah. Tell who? Oh, All right. I just passed the message on. Where did you say it? The Lancaster. You can rely on me. Bye, Billy. Oh, hello, is that Cathy? Hello, it's Mrs. Brogan here, Billy's mother-in-law. Listen, I think you ought to come over here to see me. No, I'm not summoning you for an audience. Now, just listen. So you seen him tonight, yeah? Yeah, at Rockefeller's. Are you coming or not? I don't know. Oh, come on. Rocky's taking me. Is that who you were with? Yeah, why not? He's not that old. And he's got loads of money. <laughs> and he can get tickets for things. It's not the same age as Jerome. And that's a recommendation. I hope you'll get my age on before he gets back. He flies back this morning, doesn't he? Yeah, but he'll be delayed. I mean, we always are. And you'll reckon he'll come here first, anyway. I hope not. What day it is? Yeah, I do. Don't you? Do you know there are these things you can get? They're called calendars. They've got every day of the year printed on them. You and know what I mean. Are you packed and ready to go? Ooh, come in. Oh, you're not packed. It's tomorrow. No, it's today. You see, this is where a calendar would come in very handy for you. All right. Have your little joke. But come noon tomorrow, the new tenants will be moving in, and I don't want any trouble. And if there is, don't think I can't handle myself. And what do you mean by that? You know full well what I mean. Just be ready to be on the move at noon tomorrow. Right? When was it you finished that course at the Hitler Charm School, Harry? Just you think on. It'll be a pleasure having neighbours who are as pleasant and courteous to me as they should be at my time of life. Since we moved in here 12 months ago, you've hardly deserved any pleasantness, any courteousness or even basic civility. If you had the neighbours you deserve, Mr Cross, you'd be living in Beirut. Look, love, I'm not here to discuss who should be living here. I'm here to tell you who shouldn't be living here, and that's you and yours as from noon tomorrow. I promise to have you home before dawn. Mind you, who needs to take out dawn if I have you? Did you have a nice holiday then? Come on in. Hey. Is it sunny all the time then? Mm, glorious. 
We should just uh, lie around the pool all day drinking rum punch. Oh, it must be great to go away at this time of year. Well, anybody can do it. All you need is the money. Or a rich boyfriend. <laughs> I'm working on it. Oh, I like your hair. Oh, How about us having a trip somewhere in the new year? I'll ask my boyfriend, shall I, see if he can come. Has he got a job yet? Yeah, he's doing all right, so I've got to get on. I mean it, you know. I thought about you a lot when I was away. There were loads of women there, but no competition. I'd have loved you to have been with me. The days were hot, but it got very cool at night. No heating in the hotels, then? <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Look, you're my boss. I like working here. I quite like you. But you keep asking me out. I don't know if you're serious or not, but thanks, I am not interested. I'd love to go to bed with you. Don't say things like that. Hey, but how is that for honesty, eh? Well, that's me, Tracy. I won't give you any sort of bull. Now, how many blokes do you know who tell you exactly what they're thinking? Look, let's get away from the shop sometime and then we can have a nice, relaxed conversation. Look, the answer's no. Please, don't ask again. You don't know what you're missing. But what you've never had, you never miss. I think you are off your head. Just trust me. All I want is Irene and Billy back together again, where they belong. Well, at least I know where I stand. At least I'm being straight with you. I mean, look at it this way. You want Linda out of the way just as much as I do. The reasons don't really matter. All we want is air out. Now, did you bring your photograph? No, I did not bring my photograph. Mr. Rogers. Excuse me, Mr. Rogers, could I have a simple word with you? And I don't any sarcasm about calendars. I've had enough of that from your wife. Calendars? You're supposed to be leaving this house tomorrow, and you're nowhere near ready. Would you mind telling me why? I'd say it was nothing to do with you. That's for our solicitors to sort out. There's a sheikh arriving here tomorrow. He's probably related to the Saudi Arabian royal family. And apart from that, he just happens to be the top brain surgeon in the free Western world. Is that right? What's he doing moving in here, then? He's coming here for his research. This is just doing while he's here. And what's more, he won't be arriving in a juggernaut like some I could mention. I'd say you're on a very safe bet there, Mr Cross. Twelve noon. You get your skates on. Because these brain surgeons, they're all sticklers for punctuality. Particularly the Arabian ones. I gave him a lift. Sammy stayed for a meeting about all day. I've just seen Harry Cross. No, oh, don't. I've had a dose of him today. I found that thinking of Christmas and counting to ten helps. And then getting the kids to tidy up after themselves. I can't wait till tomorrow to see his face. Oh. He really believes in the Arabian brain surgeon moving no. in here. A shaky set. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if my real dad was something like that. A man creating an intellect. A mum was a talented actress, swept off her feet in a desert Roman. A certain son of yours told Sarah Bernard there she was adopted. As if life wasn't complicated enough at the moment. Is that all you've got to say about it, then? All right, mate. How was school? All right. Got to make some banner for the stupid school play. What stupid school play? The stupid Christmas one, the one that always has the same ending. I take it you mean the nativity play, and it isn't stupid. And what sort of banner? Dirty great big one. You mean quite a large one? Well, that's what I said, innit? Hey, don't be so lippy. Go and get changed before you do your papers. I'll have my tea first. You'll do as you're told and get changed. Well, I might do my papers tomorrow. It's freezing out. It's nowhere near freezing. I'll go and get them done before it gets pitch black. Come on. You can get them done in after time if you had the bike. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm really pleased about the banner, lad. You must be the best for the job if they've chosen you. No, that's how I've been in the play. You can also lessons for the rehearsals, Dad. That is not the right attitude, Jeff. Hey, and no more stupid stories, eh? Adoption. At least he's using his imagination. As bad as Harry Cross and his brain surgeon. <laughs> Pity nothing's gonna happen tomorrow at 12. I'd love to see his face. Hey, I'll just settle for us living happily ever after in our own house at last, eh? So, 
Can you please just call round? No, not over the phone. Look, just call round and I'll... I'll forget it then, eh? Sugar. Everything all right? He's feeling a bit strong with you today, isn't he? Well, he's a real pain. I'm going to have to sort it out. Well, why don't you get Jamie to talk to him? No, I don't want him involved. Well, Rod, then? It'd scare the life out of him if he was being threatened by a copper. Definitely don't want Rod involved. Not after last time. Last time? Go on, I won't say anything. There's nothing to tell you, really. Oh, I was going out with this fella, and all Rod found out, and he thumped him, and then my dad found out, and he has a go at him as well. Well, what was wrong with him? <gasps> was he a villain or something? No, he was a very nice, respectable sort of fella. Well, what did they hit him for, then? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not because of him that I don't want to tell him about creepy Gerard. I want to sort this out myself, otherwise he's going to go on thinking I'm a stupid, vulnerable little girl that he can take advantage of. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It's better to let him see you can stand up for yourself. So, who was the other fella? You knew the one your Rod and Dad had to go at? My geography teacher. <gasps> Did you? You know, past geography, yeah. was different, but I am grateful to you, Mr and Mrs Rogers, for bringing me up as one of your own. Oh, think nothing of it. When are you going to start your banner then, love? Yeah, the next art lesson. Well, oh, you think that shows they've got a lot of confidence in you for making you responsible for it all, hmm? Nice one, son. Well, I'd rather be one of the three wise men or something. You can dress up in that. At least the curtains are safe, then. What? Your mum always used to use curtains to dress us up as the three wise men, and. I was the Virgin Mary in a sheet once. I'm not a My practice. grandmother you could did? have been Anastasia, and my true identity had to be kept secret. I'm probably the Queen of Russia. I'll see you right, you know, but only if I'm treated well. Katie, you are not the Queen of Russia or anywhere else. You are plain Catherine Rogers of Brookside Close, and your kingdom, or rather our kingdom, stretches as far as this house from 12 o'clock tomorrow. When we take over from the Wicked Ogre, Adult's Cross. Exactly. I've got it. Well, I hope it's not catching, love. I've had a strained enough day as it is. This is a cracker, Chris. A cracker. Harry Cross is expecting Arabs, yeah? Mm hmm That's what he's gonna get. Arabs. Arabs. Linda. Yeah. I'm Julia, Billy's mother-in-law. Come in. <laughs> Billy is in. Oh, he said he'd be here. It's my turn to drive. Well, he phoned to say that he'd been delayed at work. But you'd know if he'd been delayed, wouldn't you, with working in the same place? Well, I've not been in today. Perhaps he'd forgotten you were coming. I don't think so. Oh, he does have hectic social life. Oh, excuse me. Never stops. Hello. Cork Hill Residence. Oh, can I speak to Billy, please? Barbara. What's Barbara from Rain Hill? Yeah, well, will you tell him we'll see him in the Victoria's half eight? Yeah, well, he was supposed to be seeing me tonight. All right. I'll pass your message on. Do you know anything about the Victoria in Rain Hill at half past eight? No. Who was that? That was Barbara. Do you know, if he'd be straight with me, it would be much easier keeping a track on things. Normally call around to see why people have put the phone down on me. 
Well, I'm glad you came. Well? Look, I thought we were engaged. We are, Terry. And then Martin came along. Look, would you mind if I had a cup of coffee? I know it's nothing to do with me, but I hope you're not pinning too many hopes on Billy. How do you mean? Well, expecting too much of a future with him. I hope you're seeing other people like he is. Well, like you said, nothing to do with you, is it? I am freezing. He's weird, this is me. I presume you've come to see Billy. Of course, yeah. Well, it's a bit embarrassing, really, cos there's another one to see him as well. Right. I'll get off, then. I think it's best. Uh, tell him I called. Or maybe I'll bump into him later. Where did you say he'd be at half past eight? Victoria at Rain Hill. Just what sort of silly game are you two playing, eh? Don't bother telling him I called. I'll see him at work. It's more reliable. I didn't invite Martin back to England. I had no idea we'd gone to Germany, and I certainly had no intentions of trying to seek him out. But he's here. And he still has an effect on you, doesn't he? So? What are you going to do about him? No. You don't know? Well, shall I tell you? You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a choice. It's as simple as that, is it? As far as I'm concerned, it is. Him or me. Don't be so ridiculous, Terry. Ridiculous, am I? Well, I'm sick of being put on by you and by other people. And now's the time it stops. And I'm telling you not to mess me around. Because if we're still engaged, and you tell that Martin to get out of your life. But if your feelings are still the same for him after all these years, then let me know, and I'll walk away. But I'm not going to hang around while you flirt between the two of us. Now go away. Think about it. And let me know when you've made a decision. Eighty-three-year-old Gladys knew a cataract operation was the only way she was going to see properly again, but the pensioner was scared of the op. We see how she coped next at Jimmy's. <laughs> 